welcome Solex Nation. We are just coming back from a wonderful week at Disneyland with our contest winners. Yeah, so we had a great time uh, going on rides, eating great food, and just having just some fun conversations with everybody. It was, you know, I loved how well everyone got along. There were quite, they had never met each other. Yeah. And so we all had just meshed really well. You know, we thought some people would break up and, and go off on their own, but you know, we stayed together as a big group the entire two yes. days. Yeah, we should have had like a banner and walked around with <laughs> the, the Solex group coming around Disney. We should have. We had a great time. And that, I mean, we're just excited for the next time we get to do an incentive like yes. this and bring more people somewhere fun. Yes. Where we can do more things. I mean, with that, we do have Punta Cana on the table. It's already running. Yes. We have a lot of people running with that, excited about that. A lot of challenge and, and groups come together that, that are, what, are accountability they groups? They have accountability yeah. groups, yeah, to get to Punta Cana. So, um, yeah, we're excited about Punta Cana. That is our next trip. Now, we will have a little recap video for you to see next week of our Disneyland trip. So that'll that'll be fun to watch. Yeah, it'll be fun. Now, last week on our call, we talked about Cephi Dots. There are a lot of questions about Cephi Dots. And we tried to answer a lot of those last week. But Kai, mm -hmm. what is another question that we get? So one of, the, one of the questions that you're asking is coming quite a few times is how do I, if I want to send a Cephi Dot or two or three or five uh, to somebody through the mail, what's the best way to do that? How do you protect the frequencies? Yeah, and basically what we've said is put it in a foil line bag. Yes. That, that keeps us uh, through the mail system. It's going to go through x-rays and things like that. It's obviously going to have a lot of exposure to a lot of different frequencies. Mm -hmm. And so kind of like our foil line boxes when it comes to the sucrose pellets, yes. when you imprint those, the idea is to imprint the Cephi dot, the normal imprinting process. We showed you how to do that. We have a couple of videos out there on that. Mm -hmm. But now you want to keep it in a foil line bag or box or something to get it to the person. We have a solution. We came up with a solution yeah, for you. Yeah, we've tried to come up with a solution. Use your own mm -hmm. method if that's working for you. But we do have a kit now, a Cephi dot, dot kit. sharing kit. There you go. Right? And that's available in your back office. And what does it come with? Well, we have these. Let me, let's me let start with showing these. these it's going to come with 30 foil bags mm -hmm. with the stickers on them, the great, great stickers where you're just going to just show the Cephi dots. People who receive it obviously will know what it is. Um, and all you do is open up the little, the little bag mm -hmm. Put after, your dots after in. you've imprinted. Now these then, are empty bags. So you are imprinting your Cephi yeah. dots and imprinting and then putting them in these bags. You can do one, you can do 10. It's completely yeah, up to you. Depending on, on what the agreement is with the person you're sending them to. Mm -hmm. But this is a foil line bag. This is going to safely get those imprinted frequencies to the receiver where they can take it out of the bag, stick it on the part of the body or a place where you've instructed them to, to stick it. Yes. And then they have it from there on. Well, now with the with those bags, you'll also get um, a quick guide which teaches you um, how to imprint and what's in what's in each frequency. Yes. And then you'll get a um, a little guide for each person that you send them to, and this tells them uh, where to place the dot, what you yeah. can write in, what you've imprinted it with. Uh, so it's just a little quick guide for them. Yeah, I really like this one going to every person because not only can you give them some instruction and remind them of what you've talked about, maybe over the phone, over FaceTime or whatever it might be, but then you can also send a little message to them yeah. along the way. So what's going to go to the receiver is this card and then the foil line bag with the Cephi dot inside, okay? You're going to get 30 of these. Let's talk about pricing. Pricing, okay, so... These are for a 30 pack, they're just under uh, a dollar a pack. So it's they're $25 loyalty. If you want to really make this a part of your business and you want to spread Cephi dots far and wide, uh, you can put it on auto ship and you're going to save $5. So it'd be $20 on auto ship. They do have points associated with them. There's 10 points tied to these. And as everybody uh, that studied the comp plan knows, 42% of that revenue anyways goes into the commission plan. Yep. So there is commissions tied to this. What we're trying to do is just create an easy medium, a package, a kit for you to distribute. Now, that means that these are going to cost uh, just a little bit over in total for the kit per person or per 30 pack, right? Uh, about a little over $1.50 per, mm -hmm. okay? Um, we would recommend that if you were sending one dot to somebody that you probably are charging 
at least the five dollar retail. Um, and when that. you well, when you send these in the mail, when you have a foil lined bag with a Cephe dot and you have a card in there, you only need to put a stamp on it. Oh yeah, that's that's uh, that's important to know. So your total cost, yeah, it really doesn't go up. I mean, you're talking about an envelope and a stamp, two dollars around yeah. around. So $2. you charge five dollars as suggested. You can charge whatever you want. Yeah. And you've made some money. And you've made more than 100%. Yes. I mean, obviously, if you add more Cephe dots to it, we recommend that you add another $2.50 to each dot that you add. And so if you're doing two dots, that's a $7.50. But again, it is your business. You can do it mm -hmm. however you'd like to do it. Um, that helps you, know, you make that an extension of getting effective imprinted Cephe dots to anybody. Now, why are you doing this? Why? I mean, you could do this just all a cart with people yeah. one at a time. Yeah. But I think the the long term goal is to not just give them the imprinted frequencies, but you're trying to expose them to the dots themselves. And then the invitation is to follow up with them, and maybe they want the pack itself. You can do this yourself. Tell yes. people that they can get their own scanner, they can get their own subscription, they can get their own Cephe dots, and they can make these themselves. So these kits are available now. Yes, they're they're ready for you. They'll, they're shipping out this week, and yeah. so uh, for those that are interested, you can jump on that. But again, like we said in the beginning, we're not here to disrupt and say, "Hey, this is the only way to do it." If you have your way of doing it, we do love it that. that. Way. Go do it. What we're just trying to do is, is help. Yeah, make we're it a little bit easier. All right. Um, should we talk about top and rollers? Oh, sure. Okay. The top and rollers. This is the week of October twenty fourth through the thirtieth. Okay. No ties this week. Nope. So our second place winner this week is Julie Malili. And our first place winner, we haven't seen this name before, as I, as I recall. This is going to be a winner of a Solix Silver Coin, mm -hmm. part of the Legacy Group, Lee Dubell. Congratulations. You are the first place winner, recruited the most people. Yes. Uh, you're in the Legacy Club, so we're, we're sending you a uh, Solix Silver, Silver Coin. Coin. Congratulations to you, Lee, and also to you, Julie. Great job, both of you. Um, okay, we had a contest as usual. We were giving away Prime. Now, remember last week we announced that in addition to Prime, we also now have Prime methylated. Yes. And that is for those with the MTHFR gene, gene variant. variant. Yep. Um, and so uh, we're going to read some comments and right. uh, draw three. Okay. Um, here, yeah, I'll take wanna, those. Okay. And um, we asked you to specify uh, what kind of prime you would like it yes. to win, so you can yeah. get regular prime or prime methylated. Okay. Okay, you want to draw first? All right, let's mix these up. All right, here we go. Oh, I had one. <laughs> here we go. Uh, Prof BL. Okay, so we're going to need to know your name. I actually you know who this think is? I know who it is. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I think it's Barbara Loading. She's one okay. before. That's how I know. Barbara, hopefully, if this is you, I'm just going to, let's read your comment. So happy to hear about methylated prime. I knew you could figure it out. Thank you. I appreciate the encouragement. Now I can implement this additional piece I've been waiting for patiently. I'm guessing that she wants methylated prime. So we're going to send her the prime methylated. Okay. Okay. If you're not Barbara loading, <laughs> okay. please call us. Okay. And if you, and if you are Barbara and you don't want methylated, anyway, maybe you should just call us. Let us know. <laughs> yeah. I think case. we, I think we, we, yeah, we've ro royally confused yes. ourselves yeah. and <laughs> Prof BL in this. So, okay. Next one is Sheila Day. Oh my gosh, I didn't know you were coming out with the methylated, so that was very exciting to learn. Thank you. So many people need this, and Prime is amazing. Are you going to make a new bundle now, too, yes. for those that need the methylated Prime? <laughs> Please and thank you. The bundle is available in the back office. Yes, and we're working on the sampling version for the methylated as well. Yes. So that will be coming out soon, so we have all the versions of Prime available yes. to you. Sheila, you're amazing. That's a you're great amazing. question, though. That's I that's, met her at Dave Discovery. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. she is awesome. We talked a couple of times. That's awesome. Okay, well, we'll send you Methylated Prime, Sheila. Okay, one more. One more. Let's mix it up really well. All right, this is the last one. Hopefully it's not too... Uh, oh, I, I picked the long one. Just like Beck last week. I got the long one. Uh, Annette LaCroix. Love all this incredible knowledge from our panel of experts, especially Dr. Tucker. I have been taking phase one uh, prime since DOD. Ah, oh, phase one because it's the original prime. Yes. I've had leaky gut for a while since mold exposure in 2010. 
So I know it will take some time to heal 100%. I really look forward to this new methylated prime formula in my journey for healing along with the scanner. Loved connecting the liver to so many functions not often thought about like glucose metabolism and how it released when how it's released when stressed. Annette, uh, we'll send you, I think it's methylated, methylated prime. prime as well. Let's do that. And I'm really happy that you liked uh, to hear from Dr. Tucker. Now, last week was part one, and we're going to hear part two right now. Okay. So last week, we were talking about the digestive system, and we got all the way through the liver. So now we're going to start with that pesky little gallbladder right under the liver. So let's talk about your gallbladder. The, the bile exits the liver from the hepatic ducts and stores that bile in the gallbladder through the cystic duct. Cystic meaning cyst or sac. And that's what you call the duct that goes to the gallbladder. The gallbladder releases bile into the duodenum or the first part of the small intestine through the common bile duct, and that's when it's needed. When there is a release of chyme from the stomach into the small intestine, there is a trigger to cause the gallbladder to squirt that bile down into that chyme to help start emulsifying the fat. So when the stomach is stretched, with food during the digestive process, during that chyme, the gallbladder releases that bile into the small intestine. So let's talk about the pancreas, which is an amazing organ. The pancreas had two main functions. One is called exocrine, which means it creates uh, enzymes that are dumped outside the body and the alimentary canal or the gut is technically outside the body. So that's called an exocrine gland, and it also has an endocrine function. And the endocrine function is about making insulin and some other enzymes, some other hormones that we'll talk about that go into the blood system. The exocrine function, the pancreas makes pancreatic juice, and we call it juice because it's made up of a lot of different things. And that gets released in into the duodenum or the first part of the small intestine. And in a minute, we'll show you a picture of that to get, give you an idea of what that, what that looks like. But that goes into breakdown chyme. chyme. The pancreatic juice actually is, is made of amylase, which breaks down sugars, lipase, which breaks down fats, several proteolytics, which lytic meaning breakdown and proteo meaning protein, breaks down proteins. But it also puts out water and bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is baking soda and it is basic and it neutralizes the acid coming from the stomach. Because if it didn't, then it would eat holes in your small intestine because it's so acidic. Your stomach's made for acid, your small intestine's not made for acid. So if your pancreas didn't release that bicarbonate into your small intestine, you would be in trouble. The small intestine is made up of three distinct sections in descending order. The duodenum is the first section of the small intestine. It comes directly off the stomach and is only about that long, um, but it has a huge function. The jejunum is the second section, the ileum is the third section of the small intestine, and the ileum joins the colon in an area called the cecum. And we'll show you a picture of this. We also will see a cross section there of the small intestine with all the villi. And villi are little finger-like projections there that increase the surface area and help your small intestine to absorb all of these nutrients. So let's talk about the duodenum. I'm going to show you a picture. And in that picture, you'll see a little blue section of small intestine that comes from, from the stomach and comes down. That's the duodenum. It is the gatekeeper for the release of food from the stomach into the small intestine. 
Well, what do I mean by that? Well, it controls. The stomach can't release that food, that ball of chyme into your duodenum until the duodenum allows it to. The intragastric reflex monitors the fullness of the duodenum, the inflammation in the duodenum, and the pH of the chyme in the duodenum. pH meaning how basic or acid it is. To determine whether the release of more stomach contents into the small intestine can be safely done. If the duodenum is full and bulging, well, you don't want to dump a whole stomach full of contents in, into that. If the duodenum is excessively inflamed where it can't function well, you don't want to overload that with a whole stomach worth of contents. And also, if there's a whole lot of acid uh, in that chyme and in, already in the, in the duodenum, you need the pancreas to come in and do its job to, uh, to get rid of that extra acid so it can safely dissolve that chyme. So all those things are called the, the enterogastric reflex, and it's an automatic thing. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to think about it. So if the chyme is too acidic, those pancreatic enzymes are going to deal with that. And then when it gets neutralized, that stomach contents will be allowed to come on into the duodenum. So I'm going to show you another picture. This one is of, of the villi. And you'll see something kind of weird coming down through. That's the, the chyme flowing through the lumen of the small intestine of the duodenum. The duodenum begins the absorption of nutrients from this chyme through these finger-like projections on the luminal surface. And like I said, we call them villi. After absorption, the intestinal cells further break down those nutrients so that your body can use them. There is an intestinal juice produced by the glands in the small intestine that produce enzymes that further break down that chyme and protect the intestinal lining. Let's talk about the jejunum and the ileum, the second and the third sections of the small intestine. They continue to break down and process that chyme and the, uh, continue the absorption of nutrients. The levels of bicarbonate in the chyme are closely monitored and active reabsorption of the bicarbonate occurs because your body needs to reuse that bicarbonate. So it reabsorbs the bicarbonate from the small intestine. Sodium levels, salt, are closely monitored and are required to help absorb sugars and amino acids in your small intestine. If the sodium levels aren't right, you're not going to appropriately absorb sugars and amino acids. Sodium and chloride, which is your typical table sugar, sodium chloride, are also actively transported through the cell membranes to control the levels and to create an ionic gradient. An ionic gradient is where it's not like the flow of water where it levels out, but you're, it's, it's like a dam. You're creating an excess of sodium or chloride on one side. And you're doing that by actively transporting the sodium and the chloride and other things from one side, from the lumen into the cell. So water is passively diffused in and out. So if there is a lot of water in the small intestine, it, more water goes into the cell. If there's not very much, it may come out of the cell. Uh, and that happens in the small intestine as needed to regulate the absorption of water. So also, other things that you're familiar with seeing, potassium, magnesium, phosphate, iron, calcium, they're all absorbed in the small intestine. And interestingly enough, and we've talked some about vitamin D before, but calcium absorption requires the presence of vitamin D. So let's, I'm going to show you an illustration now that's really cool. And this is the cell membrane. And every one of your cell membranes in the gut looks almost identical. And this is what it looks like. 
So transport of nutrients and ions into cells for further breakdown and processing requires an elaborate cell wall, which allows active transport of ions through channels. You see that purple thing that looks like a big thick donut? Well, that's a channel, that's an ion channel. And there is a way, lots of very complex mechanisms that your body takes these different minerals and transports them into the cell through that mechanism. And that, depending on how, what the needs of your body are, depend on how much, uh, how much of these nutrients are absorbed into your cells. So now we're to the large intestine. So the large intestine is quite interesting. Once you have absorbed all the nutrients in the small intestine, you get to the large intestine. The chyme passes from the end of the ileum, of the, the, the terminal end or the very end of the small intestine into the cecum. And the cecum is kind of a dead end area that starts the small, the large intestine. And that's also happens to be where your appendix is dangling off. And as that goes through, it begins to be acted on by, guess what? The microbiome. Do you remember when we talked about the microbiome? The lar there are bacteria all throughout your system from your mouth on through, but the large majority of your microbiome or the bacteria in your gut are at the end of your ileum and in your colon or large intestine. So that gets moved through your, your large intestine and that bacteria that's in there, that microbiome, it, it creates vitamins and many of your neurotransmitters and also the other function of the large intestine is to reabsorb all that water so that your body doesn't get dehydrated every time you go through the, the process of, of, of eating and in absorbing your nutrients. So structurally, the colon's primary function is really to reabsorb the water and to form stool out of that indigestible chyme and waste products to get rid of it. Functionally, the most important function of that distal ileum and the colon is to be the home of the majority of that gut microbiome. We've talked a lot about that and its needs for diversity. And the you, your gut microbiome functions as an organ in and of itself, and it's critical to promoting and maintaining your health. So I'm gonna have them show you a picture of uh, the AO scan. This is my AO scan. It's probably a little redder than it should be. But so to look at this, you will start seeing a lot of the different things we just talked about. The digestive acids and enzymes, the pancreas, the pancreas and glycemic control, all those things start to add up now. You, we just learned about digestion all the way through. And so now all of the chemicals, all of the enzymes that we are used to talking about, now we're seeing on the AO scan. So now, hopefully, that'll mean a little bit more to you when you do your scan and you start seeing these different enzymes and things come up and you'll say, hey, I remember finding out that that lipase and the amylase, that was created in the pancreas, and it has to be released into the duodenum to help break down all these things. So maybe if those are ones or nines, I have an issue now with my pancreas. So my digestive enzymes aren't functioning the way they should. Maybe I need to take a digestive enzyme. Maybe I need to dig deeper and find out, is there something else going on? So here, here are more of the same. You got micro minerals and macro minerals and your liver and your gallbladder function. All these things are extremely important to look at and follow. And now you have a better understanding of what all these different parameters that the AO is telling you about, what that means. So that's the end of the digestive system. 
So you might wonder why. Why are we teaching you this? Well, you need it. You need to understand these things so that you can better interpret your reports. It has to make sense to you. And as we teach you these things, then the AO is just going to come alive and you're going to start understanding and realizing that what a lot of these things that you don't really know what are what they are, you're going to start realizing what they are. And this is not the end. I'll be back. Hi, I'm Carrie Summers. And I'm Amber Mosley. And a question that we get asked a lot of the time is, how do I talk about AO Mobile? How do I explain it? That's exactly right. We have some really good advice for you, is to make it simple, first of all. Don't complicate it. Just talk about it in terms of frequency, like when you turn on a switch and the light goes on. When you have your, your remote control to turn the channels on your television. Everybody's familiar with that type of a frequency. So... Yeah, and one thing that I, I kind of try to lead into, and if I'm introducing it to someone who's not familiar with frequencies or vibrations, Tesla's work, uh, stuff like that, is I talk about the inner voice. And I say, did you know that I could record your voice and we can look at the notes and see which ones are off and which ones need support? And what does that mean in the body? Because there's a lot of research out there that you know you can go and educate yourself about and do that. And I never get a no. I never get, I don't want to hear about that. I don't believe that. And you look at the reports and 90, I would say 99% of the people go, how did you know that about me? And that's a good segue into getting right. to, I guess, share the AO mobile. The I always lead so with the inner incredible. voice. Yeah. yeah. I had a guy in my living room last week that uh, he knew nothing about this technology. And I said, how about, you want to have some fun for a minute? I'm going to have you record your voice for 10 seconds. I'm going to tell you some things that are going to blow your mind. And so he said, yeah. So it was a lot of fun. We made it almost like a, a little game kind of a thing. And I got out in the scanner, put a very simple profile of like four things in the phone, and then ran an inner voice and sent him a report that blew his mind. It was that simple. And nobody's going to say no to that, really. It's, it's, everybody's curious at that point. Absolutely. And I know I remember um, um, recording um, th their son who has is autistic and he just said a few words. And whenever that report came up, the mother was just floored because it was exactly the emotion that that child was feeling that just happened in the car ride home between her and her ex. Wow. It was amazing. And it kind of gave her an insight into her, her son. And so, and it's amazing. Nobody ever says, no, I don't want to learn more about the inner voice. I've never had anybody say no. Yeah. Have you? No, never, no. never. Mm -mm. It's what we recommend that everybody lead into because it's so powerful. Yes. And it's so easy to do. Yes, absolutely. You know, Kai, we had a great week last week. Yes, it was so fun hanging that, out with That us. trip to Disneyland and with, with the winners, it was so much fun. Yep. And great people. Wasn't yeah. it amazing yeah. how well everybody just got together? We had a great time. Yep. It, it, was, it was so much fun and just getting everybody relaxed and just having a good time and then, you know, acting a little youthful along the way, you know, running to the next ride and that sort of thing. You know what? We're in the month of November. Yep. I think we need to make this, this is going to be the month of gratitude. It always is the month of gratitude, at least here in the U.S., as we celebrate Thanksgiving towards the end of the month. I think that, that let's make this month a month of focusing on things we're grateful for. Great. Right? So yep. let's have everybody f comment on this call. Comment on, say something that happened to you in this last year and an experience that you've had that you're grateful for. Share with uh, one another. If you want a name drop, go for it. But uh, I think sharing uh, some of those experiences that we have and us remembering those great experiences that we've had this last year of things we're grateful for can really propel us into this month. And we'll carry forward that theme. What are we going to give away? Let's give away some water sticks. We haven't given away a water stick in a okay. long time. So water, water sticks. sticks. With the, with the side-bend bead yep. inside the water stick. And it's really important because a lot of people don't realize how dehydrated we get during the winter months. Yeah. And so the water sticks, it's hydration, true. being grateful for all we have, I think this is a good a good. Yeah. One. Okay. Good come. Okay, so three. We'll draw three names next week. Comment on the call. Experience you're grateful for in this last year. Thanks, guys.
It's me. I followed you. You did such a good job oh. starting this. Hi, I'm Amber Mosley. And I'm Carrie Summers. And a question we get asked all the time. 